In the previous few videos we've created a couple of elements. First off we created this flag element and then we created a separate element which displays all of the flags that we have access to. The problem is however that these two elements are not accessible in the same way as modular elements should be. They are only accessible within the context of this project. And so in this video we're going to look at how we can make our elements completely standalone and completely modular. And we're going to be looking at the way Google recommends you go about creating customised modular elements. So the first thing that Google recommends is that you use the Polymer specific web server rather than any web server that you've been using to develop your main project. And so I've gone ahead and stopped my main web server. And instead we're going to use npm to install a package called polyserve. This may take a few moments to install because it is an entire web server which is being installed. Because the element is going to be entirely standalone, we're also going to create a new folder. And so I'm simply going to create a folder called stretch flag, which is our first element. Once we've created that new folder, we're also going to need to download the seeds elements templates from Polymer Elements repository on GitHub. This is going to provide us with an empty template that we can use, which we can customise to suit our specific needs of our custom element. And so if we copy the actual username and the repository name, we can use Bower to download and install that. If you look at the downloaded folder, you'll see that we have a Bower Components folder which contains the actual seed element, as well as the other dependencies, i.e. Polymer and Web Components. We don't actually want those, however. Instead, we want just the contents of this folder. And so we're actually going to move all of these files up to the right level by cutting them and pasting them into the stretch flag folder and deleting the remaining content. If we compare this to one of the other Bower components from the main project, we can see that all of these files are very similar to the ones that we've created. So now that we have access to all of our files that we're going to be using as our actual element, we can go ahead and navigate to this folder within Bower and actually perform the install command to update all of our dependencies. So we can simply type Bower install. And that will go through all of the bower.json file and install all of the relevant packages. And that will of course create a new bower components folder for us with all of the relevant dependencies. If we look at the stretch flag elements that we created however, you will see that the only actual import that we need is the paper toolbar element. And so we can go ahead and amend all of the dependencies within our new element so that we only have this one paper toolbar dependency. To do that, it's simply a matter of amending this bow.json file, which as we can see, includes all of the basic elements by default. So we're going to keep the Polymer dependency, and we're going to add in paper toolbar. We can of course add more detail around this element as well, so we can rename this to stretch flag. For the sake of this demonstration I have gone ahead and updated this detail, just so it looks more realistic. But I also want to highlight the point that using these keywords is actually quite important. If you are happy enough that you actually want to publish your elements later on, these keywords are used by websites to identify all of the web components elements out there on GitHub. And so simply by including these keywords, your elements will be included on these websites automatically. Now before we get too far ahead of ourselves and try to import our own elements, we can have a look at the actual elements which is provided to us. As you can see, this is all of the code which is included in the element by default. And we will begin to amend this code to reflect our stretch flag elements shortly. It is important however that we have a look at this in action at the moment so that we can see how it works without us making any adjustments. If we in our terminal type polyserve, 
This is going to begin the web server, which is going to host our actual element for us. And it's going to provide a link to the actual element, which as you can see is hosts in localhost 8080 components stretch flag. If we navigate to this page, we'll see that this is an actual template, which we can go ahead and edit ourselves later on. You may also notice in some of the newer elements that we also have folders called demo and tests. The demo folder often contains files required to actually demonstrate the elements in action, as well as some different ways that it can be used. While the test folder often contains unit tests to ensure that the element is working properly as it's being developed. We're not going to go into any more depth about these in this video, but just be aware that by default the template doesn't actually include these at the moment, although they are becoming more and more standard. So if we open up the stretch flag file again, we can go ahead and begin to customise it to suit our specific needs. So as you can see, I've opened up the stretch flag elements that we created, as well as the sample templates from our new element. And we're going to actually amend this new element to actually reflect the functionality of our element. And the first thing to do, of course, is to change the name. The name also needs to be changed at the very bottom of the element, where we register it with Polymer itself. So we specify that this is the stretch flag element. While we're working with the script tag, we can also copy across the properties that we created, which are going to override the properties of the template. The template also includes some elements as demonstration as to how you can manipulate the actual JavaScript throughout the life cycle of this element. We don't actually need any of these elements, and so we can go ahead and delete them all. At this point we obviously haven't made as many changes as possible, but we are going to need to also make changes to the name of the element in the index page. So we also need to open up that index page and replace all of the references to the iron component page with stretch flag. An important point to note here is that we use the double dot notation rather than specifying bower components when we're referencing the actual files. This is because Polymer isn't tied directly to Bower, and other package managers as well as no package managers at all can be used to actually manipulate Polymer elements. It's just that the whole process does become much easier when you are using the Bower package manager. So if we refresh our page now, you should see that the seed element has been created, but none of the actual content is being displayed properly yet. And this is because of the way that our element is currently working. So we are currently specifying, for example, that we're going to use our components. And because we don't need any of this content anymore, we can delete this and replace it with the contents from our original stretch flag element. And remember we also need to remove references to bower components here as well. Now we haven't actually imported it yet, but we do actually need to count the country flags element as one of our dependencies, because without this our element's just going to display an empty square. If we reload the page for example you can see that the element isn't loading properly. And so if we open up the bower.json file again, we can add this to our list of dependencies. Which does also mean that we need to run the bower install command again. Which means that we first need to kill our web server by holding Ctrl C. By restarting the web server and going back across our page and refreshing, we will see that we have this element now. Because the dependency has been correctly downloaded. 
Now the final step is to, to actually share our element. Because it is completely standalone at this point, we can create a new repository on GitHub and push this up to the new repository. This means that when we want to install this element in the future, we can simply add it as a dependency. And Bower, for example, can then go ahead and download all of the relevant files for us. Off camera, I'm going to do the exact same process for a stretch flags element. And I'll share links to both of the GitHub repositories in the description below. In the next video, I'm going to be wrapping up this series, as well as talking about some of the more important talking points about Polymer. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that.